So now in the last video, we made an AND gate using an integrated circuit right here. This is the uh, 7408, the 74HC08 to be more exact. So the trim pots towards the more positive supply and the switch here you can see switches to the uh, positive supply it does have a pull down resistor. So now one of the inputs is uh, low thanks to that pull down resistor. That one's high, but you can't really tell until you press the button here. We give a high signal to both inputs, the output goes high. If I hold this one down and turn the uh, trim pot towards a more negative, little halfway point, now we have a low input and a high input, and the output goes low. Pretty straightforward. So, we can easily light an LED, but we can't really power much. So, we can use a uh, relay module. What we will do is power the uh, relay module from the supply. We'll look at that coming up. And we just have to give a signal from the integrated circuit. That way we can power something that needs a lot more current, like this motor right here. So now, powering the fan. Before we do that, quick I'll mention, I have this on plastic because we have some exposed pins right there. I don't want them to fall into the slots and accidentally powering in an area we don't want that uh, powered. That's how you get short circuits. So in any case, we just have to apply positive to one of these right there and then negative to the other. I use the little pliers to bend them out to make them a little easier to connect to. I have these jumpers here with alligator clips crimped onto them. So we'll put that one directly to the positive supply and uh, don't touch any metal with it, again, to avoid short circuiting. And uh, this one directly to the negative supply right there. Now, the power supply, I generally limit the current to just a little bit more than I can expect to use. So you can see it's up to 3 amps. This can pass uh, quite a bit of uh, current, and that's why I'm not going to use the integrated circuit, which the outputs of the integrated circuit probably only go to about 20 milliamps. I haven't looked at the data sheet lately, and then the entire integrated circuit probably can only output uh, 40 milliamps of current, so not a lot. So this is going to be loud, but uh, look at how much current, look at how much current we are passing there. It also hit my finger, but these are just soft blades. Nah, not a terribly big deal. So in any case, that goes fast, it's really loud, and uh, I think it's even better for the motor just to get rid of that fan. I think that's asking a little too much of it. And uh, now you'll hear a high a high wind and a lot less current, but still a lot more current than we want there. So I'm not going to uh, use that fan blade anymore. We also have an LED or a diode, I mean, rectifier diode here. And I can move this jumper over there and we'll lose a little bit of voltage. It will help slow down the motor a little bit. And uh, we'll plug it in there. See if the current went down a little bit. Yeah, current went down a little bit because we lost a little voltage there. So I'm going to do that. Also, this meter doesn't like short circuits. Sometimes it turns the output off when it thinks it sees a short circuit. And a diode in series with a high current load helps avoid that mistake. So now I grabbed a different module. The one I wanted isn't going to work the way I wanted right now. And uh, so I grabbed this one. The other one had some pins that stuck out for this wiring here. And with those pins, you just grab one of these jumpers and it slides right over the pin like that. And then on the other side of the jumper, you have a pin to plug into somewhere else. But in any case, these ones we just screw down. Pretty simple. That's DC plus, DC minus, and in right there. So DC plus goes to the positive supply, DC minus to the negative, and then we have this jumper that's just floating around. And I have it wired right now so that when we give it a high input, it switches. So you can see that red LED came on to let you know it's been switched, but uh, it turns on. We can also go directly to the positive supply. So now, this is a module. So we power the relay with the uh, power supply instead of directly from the integrated circuit. We'll give the uh, signal from the integrated circuit but uh, there you can see it was, uh, looks like three milliamps uh, flowing somewhere. But uh, in any case, we switch this. You can see that we got about 80 milliamps of current almost needed to keep the relay energized. This is a five volt relay. The lower voltage relays 
take a higher amount of current to hold them on. So it's switched right now and it's not switched right now. There is a uh, normally open spot. So right now it's not switched and so there's a connection between those two points right there. When you switch it, when you hear that click, it moves over and it uh, holds there while it is energized. That's why it's normally open. When it's not energized, it's stuck in the normally closed spot. When you energize it, it moves to the normally open spot and stays there as long as it's energized. This particular unit, we can shuffle this little pin here and now it's going to do the opposite. So now we'll zoom back, make sure we stay on the uh, plastic there and now we'll go to positive, nothing happens. We go to negative, it switches. So that's what the other relay was set to do, switch when it goes to negative, but especially if this is your first video watching a relay, relay like this, you want it to switch when it's positive. So now we got our relay module. The relay will be powered by these two wires. All we need is a high or low signal. So this trim pot's already set to high. It's an AND gate, just because we used this in the last video. So we got high on one pin, low on the other pin until we press this button. And you can hear the relay switch and see the uh, light uh, light up to indicate that the uh, relay is being energized right now. And now you can see I added some uh, jumpers here. This one coming to COM and then this one to the other side with the uh, alligator clip. That's the normally open so it's off right now until the relay energizes. Over here to the uh, LED again I have the uh, red jumper with the alligator clip so that we can wire up the motor and we will do that right now we'll zoom in a little bit but we still want to kind of look at the currents involved and so we're just going to do the motor without the fan again the direction depends on which side you put more positive which side you put more negative but in any case we got them both clipped and nothing's going to happen I do have the trim pot set more positive until I press the button right there so this relay, these uh, switches, I believe they can handle uh, 10 amps of uh, current. It, it depends a bit on the voltage too. But it uh, looks like they can handle about 10 amps of current. And uh, this is less than an amp. We're nowhere near that. So that's why you want the relays. But the relays can not usually be powered directly from uh, other circuitry very easily. The relay modules take care of that. They put the circuitry that you need and makes life a lot easier for you. So in any case, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos. Click like, subscribe, the bell, and all that. I will see you in the next video.